Dallas Theological Seminary's Chapel Podcast. <clears throat> wow! Didn't know we'd have such a group here today. This is great. Hey, I want to talk to you today about your ambitions. Uh, how many of you have some ambitions for this summer? <laughs> I want to get through Greek. I want to get through Hebrew. I just want to survive summer school. What, tell me, what, what's one of your big ambitions for this summer? A nap. A nap. <laughs> I'd like to deal with my sleep deprivation. Any, we got another one besides that? Yes, amen. Very good. Yeah, that's a good ambition. Uh, ambitions are uh, wonderful things. They can also be challenging things. Uh, we can have mixed ambitions, can't we? Uh, this side of heaven, I would say we're always operating with mixed ambitions, actually. A lot of times we struggle with the conflict between a holy ambition and a selfish ambition. Anybody here ever have that struggle? Uh, it's a good indicator that you're alive and on this planet Earth if you're struggling with those things. Uh, the month of June is, is quite a big month for me, especially as I reflect on ambition. So I thought, I thought I'd just run through uh, a little bit of my story and, and how I'm doing with the wrestling with the ambitions. Um, at the end of this month, I'll be celebrating my 31st wedding anniversary, and so I have an ambition to celebrate with my wife in San Francisco. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, as I look back 32 years ago, uh, it reminds me of another ambition I had. Uh, I was on a bike trip cross-country on my way to see Kathy. Uh, and so uh, that was a 2,500-mile solo bicycle ride. It, it took some ambition to uh, make my way to her house. After I got to her house, I started in Michigan, went down through St. Louis. I was in a wedding in St. Louis and then had to go back up to Michigan. And I, I got a real ambitious boost after visiting her and uh, rode back to New York twice as fast. Uh, so, you know, those ambitions, those drives, pretty, pretty amazing things. Uh, last year, this very day, I was in another bicycle race, Race Across America started in San Diego and we, we rode to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, and I had a partner, Pete Wilson from Australia. We were, we were representing the old guys in a two-man team. And, uh, and so that, that took some ambition. Now, the thing that uh, I really want to have us take a look at, though, is how do we know if we're being driven more by holy ambition or more by selfish ambition. It's a very, very faint line that a lot of times I'm kind of swerving from one side to the other. Many of you are uh, really blessed by God with a lot of natural abilities, talents, gifts, spiritual gifts. Some of you play the trumpet, like Chaplin here. Some, like Elizabeth, play the piano. Some of you teach, some of you preach, some of you serve, some of you administrate. I mean, there's all kinds of just unbelievable things that all of you are able to do. Uh, I ride a bicycle, that's one thing I do. The bicycle has become a metaphor for me to help me evaluate what's the drive here, what's driving me. Uh, with this particular thing. I'd like to read a passage in Romans 6, <clears throat> verse 11 and 12. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's the first uh, key strategy I want us to think about today. It's the second Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. And that's the second key strategy I'd like us to consider 
as we're evaluating, am, am I being driven more by a holy ambition or a selfish ambition? So let's look uh, very quickly uh, just at the first. What does this mean to be alive to God in Christ Jesus? I think my best example I could possibly think of is the Apostle Paul. Before we see Paul on the Damascus Road encounter, was he an ambitious guy? He was pretty ambitious, wasn't he? Hebrew of the Hebrews. Now, after his encounter with Christ on the Damascus Road, would we say that he was an ambitious guy? No less ambitious, if anything, perhaps more. What was different about the ambition? What drove him differently after his encounter with Christ? It's interesting. In 2 Corinthians 5.14, Paul ends up saying, it's the love of Christ that compels me. Christ's love for me. My growing love for Christ. Uh, this is the thing that drives me to more holy efforts for Christ. Okay? Um, how are you doing? I'm being gripped by God's grace. Is the love of Christ powerful driver in your life. Does that explain why I'm doing what I'm doing? Uh, on the other strategy, um, looking at verse 12, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Interesting, in the King James, uh, we used to translate this, the lust of the flesh. Now, when you hear that lust of the flesh, what's the first thing you think of? <laughs> the lust of the flesh, right? Uh, we, you know, we tend to think of those lustful sins, uh, sins of the body even. But that's really not at all what this is talking about. What's this talking about? It, it's talking about, the word here is thumia, which means desire or drive, uh, but it also has epi in front of it, which gives us the idea of overdrive, over-desire. So we're not only just talking about bad things that drive us, we could even be talking about good things that drive us. We could have inordinate desire for good things that become the source of our okayness in the place of Christ himself. Um, how would you know if you're being driven by something uh, other than Christ to secure your own sense of okayness. Let me give you three little gauges on your dashboard that I'd like you to put on your dashboard, and I'd like you to watch these gauges, and that, that can guide you to help you discern, am I being more driven by a selfish ambition or a holy ambition? Okay, here's the three gauges. Anger, fear, and sadness. Three primary emotions. I'd like you to monitor how you're doing on these emotions, okay? Now, if something blocks you from getting a good thing, you'll be angry. That's very understandable. If something blocks you from getting an ultimate thing in your life, you'll be epi-angry. <laughs> is that the thing that makes you okay? And is the blockage of that the thing gets in the way of your ultimate desire being fulfilled? How about fear? Uh, if something good is threatened, then you're going to be worried. If something ultimate in your life is threatened, then you're going to be paralyzed. You'll be epi-worried. Sadness. If you lose something good, then you'll grieve. You'll weep. It's a terrible thing. But if you lose something ultimate in your life, you'll want to throw yourself off a bridge. You'll be epi sad. Now, as we journey through life, uh, we're going to encounter all of these primary emotions of anger, fear, and sadness. Uh, there are always opportunities for us. There are gauges on our dashboard to discern what's really driving me. Um, is it so important that I win this bike race? Is it so important that I play my trumpet 
with the high C? Is it so important? Whatever it is that you do, is that the thing that's your ultimate source of okayness? If that thing gets blocked, what's your emotional response to that? Okay. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.14, it's the love of Christ that compels us. Uh, so two strategies. Help me to put off using other things as the source of my okayness, but help me to put on the powerful driver, the most powerful ambition of all, uh, the grace that I've received in Christ. Think about those things as you journey through uh, the rest of this week, the rest of this summer. Um, be aware of your drivers. We all have mixed drivers. Uh, our ambitions will be mixed every day this side of heaven. Uh, but am I growing more and more being transformed by the amazing grace of God in my life. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, we thank you so much for your common grace and your special grace in our lives. Uh, we know that everything that we have is ultimately from you. There's, there's not one thing that we could boast about that we have not received from you. And we pray that these would be compelling things in our lives as we look at all the good things, all the talents, the gifts, the abilities. Uh, we pray that these would be things that we would not misuse for our own sense of okayness, but we would celebrate and use for your glory and to give back wonderfully to you. We pray every day we'd be more and more compelled by the love of Christ in our life and uh, that we would be mindful to keep an eye on our primary emotions as indicators of um, things that might be making us epi-angry or epi-worried or epi-sad. Uh, you are such an amazing God, and we thank you so much for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>